darlings, Mimi G here with another sew along as part of my Mimi G for my Halloween collaboration. Today we're going to be making a floor length duster. Now all we're really going to do is create new look 6735 and we're going to modify the cardigan pattern to be floor length, which means we're simply going to add length to the existing pattern. Now I'm going to be using New Look 6735 as my pattern. I think it's a great cardigan pattern. It's very basic. It has two fronts, one back, the tie, and of course the band. Very simple, not a lot of pieces. If you have another pattern at home that is similar, meaning two front pieces and a back, then you can make the same modification to that pattern as well. Let's talk about the things you're going to need. You're clearly going to need a pattern, so preferably New Look 6735. You're going to need some pattern weights. Uh, these are just large washers. I get them at my local home improvement store. You're going to need some pins, the basics. You're going to need scissors, one for paper, one for fabric. You should never mix the two. They dull your blades very quickly. You should uh, have a marking pen, marker, or chalk roller. A seam ripper in case you make a mistake and you need to rip out your seam. The back of the envelope says you need some buttons. These are 5 8 of an inch size buttons and I'm using four. Uh, you can use four or five depending on how many buttons you want to add. You're going to need some rulers, so a clear ruler and I always like to have a seam gauge handy. And of course you're going to need a tape measure. Now for this project you can use a number of fabrics. You can use a lightweight knit, a double knit, a sweater knit, which is what I'm using here. And of course there are direct fabric links in the blog post and in the description box below. If you're working on pattern 6735 from New Look, you should have the following pieces cut out in your size. You should have the band, the belt, you should have your sleeve pattern, and of course your front and your back pattern pieces. This is a very simple modification so I'm going to show you really quickly how to do this. I have my fabric folded in half with right sides facing so the wrong side of the fabric is facing me. My salvage edges are meeting and it's folded the length of my fabric. So what I'm going to do is this pattern piece which is the back says that I need to place it and cut on the fold of my fabric so the fold is over here near, near me. So I'm going to lay my pattern piece onto my fabric. I'm going to use my pattern weights to hold it in place. And now of course all we need to do is add length to this. Now normally you would add it at the waist if we were, if we were making a waist modification, but we're not. We're just adding length to this. So we're actually going to measure from your high shoulder point down to however long you want it. If you want it to your ankle, measure to your ankle. If you want it to the floor, measure from your high shoulder point to the floor. Literally by placing your tape measure on the highest uh, point of your shoulder and measuring all the way down, have somebody take a look down there, see what that number is. So I'm going to place my tape measure at the shoulder point of my back pattern piece. And I'm going to measure all the way down until I get to the 58. Then I'm going to use my marking pen. This is disappearing uh, ink so it just goes away. And I'm going to make a little dot just to remind myself that that's where I need to stop. I'm going to remove this. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make just a straight line across the bottom. And now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to naturally follow the lines of the pattern. So I'm going to place my ruler so that it's aligned with my pattern, right? And I'm just going to follow the natural line until I get to the bottom. Now once we have our new line in place, we're simply going to cut around this. As you're cutting, make sure that you transfer all of your dots and of course snip into your notches. Once you're done cutting, go ahead and remove your pattern piece. 
we're going to set this aside and we're going to make the same modification to our front pattern piece. Now we're going to add the length the same way we did to the back to the front. So you're going to place your pattern piece, this one is not cut on the fold because we need two front pieces. Place your pattern weights onto your tissue paper, measure the length, make your markings just like we did for the back and cut around it transferring all of your dots and all of your notches. When you get to the front of your pattern piece, you're going to make one straight line all the way down. Before we cut on the fold, but since we're not cutting on the fold, we simply need to extend this very straight line all the way down. Remove your pattern weights. And we're going to set our two front pieces aside. And now the only other place that we need to add that same amount of length to is our band, right? Because we don't want the band to be short. And you're going to do that the exact same way. You're just going to measure however much you added from the bottom of your pattern piece to your hem. Whatever that distance is, you need to add that amount to your tie. Now the other thing that you want to transfer on this pattern piece are your buttonholes. So what you're going to do is you're going to see these little dashes. These are your buttonhole markings. So I want you to just pierce through your paper until you mark your fabric. And I press into the dot for the top of my buttonhole and the bottom of my buttonhole. Now if you want to add two more buttons, let's say, then all you need to do is measure the distance between the buttonholes. That's where my seam gauge comes in handy, right? So what you do is you just measure the distance between buttonholes so that you know exactly what the distance is. So it looks like it's three and a half inches. So what I would do is from the bottom of my buttonhole, I would measure down three and a half inches and I would make another dot. Then what you want to do is you want to measure the length of that buttonhole. So I'm going to measure to C. It looks like it's about three quarters of an inch. So from that dot, I'm going to measure down three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to make my other dot. Now I've created another buttonhole. You can create as many as you want along your band. Now there's no need to add any length to your sleeve or your tie belt. So you simply can lay them on top of your pattern with your pattern weights on top and cut around transferring all your dots and your markings. Now before we get sewing, let's review all of the pieces you should have. You should have cut out two pieces for your tie. You should have cut two sleeves. You should have two band pieces that have been modified. And then of course you should have your two front pieces and your one back piece that was cut on the fold. Okay, we're gonna start with our back piece which was cut on the fold and with right sides facing you you're going to lay one front piece over the top of the back at the shoulders and you're going to align your notches and we're going to pin and I'm going to pin again one more time in the middle and we're going to sew across our shoulder. We're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a normal length stitch. Now you're going to continue and do the same thing placing your remaining front piece over the back piece, right sides facing, pinning at the shoulder and sewing across. Alrighty, if you have already sewn your shoulder seams, go ahead and press your seams open, right? You wanna always press your seams open. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to attach our sleeve using the flat method. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab one of your sleeves and you wanna make sure that the right sides are facing and that you're working with the right sleeve. So make sure that you have one single notch to one single notch and uh, two single notches to two single notches. 
with right sides facing, you're going to place that center notch um, or dot on the sleeve cap along the seam line of your shoulder and we're going to pin there. And then I want you to go ahead and pin your single notch to single notch. And then you're going to do the same thing at your double notch. You're going to pin your double notch to your double notch. And now we're just going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to pull a bit on the bottom layer so that you can ease your sleeve cap into it. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. If you see that you need to pull too much, you can simply make a couple of snips into your sweater, not into your um, sleeve, but just along the edge of your sweater so that you can ease that sleeve cap in. Now that we have our sleeve cap sewn in, right, we don't have any puckers, we don't have any gathers, we're going to do the other sleeve the same exact way, so do the same thing we just did again. And then once we're done with that, we will go ahead and sew the entire side seam up through the sleeve. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin underneath the arm. So we're going to put our seam lines together. and we're going to pin there and then we're going to pin along our arm along our sleeve right so match your sleeve notches and then pin again at the bottom now we're going to move down to the side seam and you're basically going to pin all the way down your side seam like every eight or nine inches you just want a couple of pins along the entire side seam to keep things together while you're sewing. And now starting at the bottom of our duster, we're going to sew in one continuous seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. When you get to that pin that's underneath your arm, you're just going to continue along the sleeve. Now go ahead and serge the entire seam if you want to. Um, and you're going to pin and sew the entire side seam on the other side the same way. Now we're going to grab our neckband and with right sides facing and aligning your notches, we're going to sew across the top using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to press your seam open. Now before we um, attach our band, I'm going to have you fold the bottom of, of the band, right sides facing each other, and I want you to sew across the bottom one inch. And you're going to do that to the other side so that we have a finished bottom. And you're going to do the same thing to the other end of your band. 
Now what you're going to do is you're going to fold your neckband in half and we're going to start pinning it to our sweater. What we're going to do is we're going to pin starting at the back of our, uh, our duster and we're going to pin our band right sides facing so we're pinning on the right side of our back and you're going to align those notches along the neckline you're going to align the dots so that they're on your shoulders and you're going to pin all the way down until you reach the bottom of your duster make sure that you're aligning your notches and continue doing this all the way down and down the other side as well when you reach the bottom during your pinning you're going to notice that your band is an inch shorter than your sweater and that's on purpose because remember we closed off this edge so just leave it like that and pin here and we're going to end up folding this up and pinning and then we're going to sew all the way around so just go ahead and pin making sure that you're about a about one inch below the edge of your sweater and then fold it over and pin all layers together you're going to do that on both sides once you have the entire thing pinned we don't want to stretch this so we're going to start at the center back and we're going to work all the way down one side and then we'll start again from the center back and work our way down the other side. We're going to be using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. When you start approaching the bottom, you're going to make sure that your fabric is folded up towards the band and you're going to sew through all layers. Then we have a nice flushed bottom. You're going to do the same thing on the other side, starting at the center back and working your way all the way down. Okay, now you should have finished all of your top stitching. So now what you're going to do is you're going to turn under the hem of your duster. So turn over a full inch. We already have that one inch that was uh, done with the end of our band. So what you're going to do is you're going to press, turn and press that inch all the way across the bottom of your of your duster and then starting where your seam is we're gonna sew making sure that our needle is 5 eighths of an inch from our turned edge so all the way across your hem stopping right where our band began now we're going to do our belt loops. Now everybody's waist is different. Your natural waist may not fall in the same place that my natural waist falls. So I want you to go ahead and put this on and we're going to mark where, you're, where you want your belt loops if you want belt loops. What you're going to do is you're going to place your duster on and then you're going to see where your natural waist is, where you would naturally want your belt to be and you're going to put a little pin there. And then we're going to create our belt loops. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut two pieces of fabric that measure four inches by two and a half inches. And we're going to press this so that they meet in the middle and then you're going to press it again. And now we're going to close this by sewing close to the edge and you're going to make two of these. now we're going to place them. So 
working on a single layer and looking at the pin that you have where you marked your waist where you want your belt loops to go we're going to place the center of the belt loop where the pin is and I want you to pin now what you're going to do is you're going to fold under a half inch and we're going to sew across the bottom of it turn this to the side and you're going to do the same thing on the other side of your belt loop you're going to turn under a half inch and you're going to stitch it down and you're going to put your, put in your other belt loop the same way now we're going to turn under the sleeve hem so I have pressed a full inch all the way around and we're going to sew making sure our needle is 5 eighths of an inch away from the folded edge you're going to do this to both of your sleeves and now all we have to do is sew our tie together and uh, sew our buttonholes grab your tie belt and with right sides facing we're going to sew at the center back and then press that seam open and then fold it in half we're going to leave about an inch and a half opening right in the middle so start sewing about five eighths of an inch away from the seam and we're going to sew until we get to the tip of our tie and then pivot across the bottom and you're going to do the same thing starting again about 5 eighths of an inch from the center seam allowance all the way down now we're going to turn this right side out so using a pencil or a point turner if you have one you're just going to put that corner in. You're going to push it through until we get to that opening. And remove your pen and pull. And do the same thing on the other side. Push it through. And now I want you to close this edge and then we're going we're gonna press this nice and flat. So turn in the seam allowance and then place your needle along the very edge of it and stitch this closed. Now give this a good press all the way from one end to the other and then we're going to do our buttonholes. Okay, I put my presser foot or my um, buttonhole foot onto my sewing machine. Now you're going to need to read the instruction manual for your specific sewing machine to see how to make a buttonhole because they vary um, depending on what machine you have. But I did want to show you um, a trick that I use when I make my buttonholes, especially if I'm using a thin fabric. What I like to do is I always keep tracing paper at my, at my uh, sewing table. And what I do is I rip off a piece. 
and I place it underneath my presser foot and then I place my fabric on top of that. I place my fabric on top of my tracing paper and what the tracing paper does is it helps to glide the fabric while the buttonhole is being made because it is an automatic buttonhole maker. So I'm going to place my needle right where the dot of my buttonhole is. Now some buttonhole makers will start backwards and work down and some work forward and back. Mine works backwards. So I'm going to put my needle at the bottom of my buttonhole marking. When my buttonhole is done, I cut off any loose threads and I simply tear away the tissue uh, tracing paper. And it adds not only stability to my buttonhole, but it keeps my machine from getting caught or if I'm working with really thin fabrics for my buttonholes to get out of whack. This kind of helps me to guide my fabric while I'm making my buttonholes. I'm just going to continue making my buttonholes, and so should you, and then we're all done. That's all there is to it. I can't wait to see all of your amazing duster cardigans. Until next time, peace.